Hi, welcome to another episode with SK. Huawei, a multinational technology company from China, found itself in hot waters with the Trump administration in May 2019 when it was banned from doing any business with any American company. Today, Huawei is rumored to be considering selling their smartphone brands, the Mate and P series lineup, and this comes after selling their online based brand called Honor. In this short episode, we take a look at what really transpired with Huawei until this point. It's worth noting that Huawei's problems date back from 2012 when the US House Intelligence accused Huawei and ZTE, another Chinese telecommunications company, for posing a national security threat and they discouraged any business from buying their equipment. And neither ZTE or Huawei was able to convince the US government that they could not be persuaded by the Chinese government to spy on the American citizen or using US technology in China. Both ZTE and Huawei failed to provide detailed information on the Chinese government's role in both companies. By 2018, ZTE got banned from the US for shipping US technology to Iran and North Korea that violated their trade agreement with USA and as a result they had to pay $892 million as a fine. From this part it went downhill for both companies. On the same year the use of Huawei and ZTE phones were banned from all US military bases worldwide. Facebook like it has always been in a hot mess was also reported to be giving Huawei special access to user data and had similar agreements with Lenovo, Oppo and TLC, all Chinese companies. Australia came out of the desert to be the first country to ban the use of 5G technology from Huawei, citing the same security reasons as the US. In June 2018, Huawei knocks off Apple and becomes the number two smartphone maker in the world. This is the part that got most people thinking that the US is trying to block Huawei from the, the number one smartphone maker in the whole world. But it really didn't make sense why the US would let Samsung be the number one smartphone maker in the world and not let Huawei. Huawei's dishonesty didn't play out so well for their future in the smartphone business, but we'll get into that later on. For the rest of 2018, the following happened. Britain announced it would follow Australia's plan to get rid of Huawei network equipment. Huawei's CFO was arrested in Canada at the request of the US and Japan announced to stop using Huawei's technology. Despite all of this, Huawei managed to sell over 200 million smartphones and retaining their number two spot. In 2019, Huawei launches the P30 series and soon after that, the US suspicions are confirmed when Vodafone finds hidden backdoors on Huawei's equipment. That could mean that Huawei's authorities have access to user data on Vodafone's platforms. And by May 2019, Trump effectively burns Huawei. What did this mean actually? Well, it meant that Huawei could not use any US-based technology. This includes Google services, processing chips license, Microsoft, Intel, and other US-based companies. All products of Huawei released before the ban could still be produced, but all the other products that were released after the ban could not be produced using US technology. Then, Huawei's dishonesty kicks in in the efforts to save the company. To give you a background of Huawei's dishonesty, we look back to the P20 launch. When Huawei was caught inflating benchmark scores and copying the iPhone design, when the P30 was launched, the company claimed it had superior zoom. It could take moon pictures while it turns out they used images from a DSLR camera. And there were reports that the P30 came with moon photos pre-installed, but these findings were never verified. Also, Huawei claimed they had their own operating system in development and losing Android was the least of their worries. But the operating system was far from being ready. Instead, Huawei continued to use Android without Google services. Why did they use Android while it was brand? Well, that's because anyone can use Android. It's an open source. However, 
to get Google services on the device, you must pay a licensing fee, of which Huawei could not because it was banned. On this present day, Huawei reported the smallest increase in profit for the year 2020 after the release of the P40 series lineup, and the pandemic did not help at all. The Mate 40 reported to be the last batch of devices from Huawei, but it looks like we might see the release of the P50 and Mate 50 provided that Huawei still has enough stock of chips manufactured before the ban. Late last year, Huawei sold Honor to a consortium made up of more than 30 Asians and my suspicions, one of them is or might be Xiaomi. Huawei's best bet at the moment is to use Qualcomm's technology to manufacture their phones. Well, Qualcomm is one of the companies that was given a green light by the US government to work with Huawei, just like Microsoft. However, they have a competitor from China named Xiaomi. Well, it's a competitor or maybe a friend or a cousin. You cannot be really sure. And it will definitely be difficult for Huawei to sell phones outside China without Google services, while Xiaomi sells them with Google services and much more cheaper. With this being said, it makes sense why selling the P series and the Mate series is on the cards. I hope you have enjoyed this episode. Please leave a thumbs up and a comment on how you see the future of Huawei mobile unfolds. Catch you on the next one. Peace out.